today we will learn about internal rate of return or irr in the last session we understood what npv is it is the comparative rate it helps us understand whether the actual return of an investment is above or below a specific discount rate that we use but it doesn't tell us what the actual rate is so what is irr irr or the internal rate of return uh is the actual percentage return or yield you are making out of an investment over its entire lifetime since it's over its entire lifetime it is also called the yield to maturity or ytm now let's take an example so let us say that you buy an apartment uh, by paying uh, 50 lakh now you rent the apartment out for 3 years uh, at 1 and a half lakhs a year and after 3 years you sell it at let's say 55 lakh now what is the total return you have made uh, or the yield to maturity or irr Uh, the total percentage return over the entire life of the investment which is 3 years is uh, both the rental yield and the profit on the sale of that particular asset hence again to repeat irr or internal rate of return is the total return of an investment expressed in percentage terms uh, over its lifetime okay now how is it calculated from an arithmetic perspective um uh, irr is the rate at which the npv is zero that is since npv is uh, the pv of inflows minus uh, the pv of outflows that is at irr pv of inflows is equal to the pv of present value of outflows how do we find out the irr well you just need to keep iterating uh, so you you use the npv function for example if you want to do that and uh, try different uh, discount rates at one particular rate you will find that the npv is um, zero or almost zero and that will give you your internal rate of return that is the rate the discount rate at which npv is zero is the internal rate of return or the irr take an example now mr rao recently met an insurance agent uh, he is looking to buy a life insurance policy and uh, the details are that on death and on illness uh, in case of these events he'll get a certain sum but for our purposes if you're looking at the investment return part of this policy uh he is paying an annual premium starting today of 22838 these are his outflows his investment um he is going to do this for 25 years and uh, on maturity he is going to receive an amount of 13 lakh 75000 okay uh now this being the case that his in uh, sorry his outflow is 22838 for 25 years and on maturity is going to receive this we need to find out what is the return um or the yield to maturity or the irr of this particular investment and uh, we can easily do so using excel so let's do that so we put down the cash flows uh, starting from today that's year 0 and you will see that they are negative and we've got uh, 25 cash flows okay uh which uh, goes up to year 24 because it starts with a zero now a year after that we are assuming a year after that we get the maturity amount all right now let's see uh, let's first use the npv function and find out uh, it's a comparative tool so i'm just arbitrarily taking um let's say a discount rate of 8% okay So uh, how do we calculate the NPV so we're trying to find out here whether this investment is is giving us a return higher or lower than 8% which is the discount rate we're using so i'm going to use the NPV function and uh, it says rate okay so i'm giving the cell reference uh, value 1 value 2 up to 
uh, this value. Now remember in the NPV function we don't start with the present value. We start with the range of future values and we add the present value outside of the NPV function. So I'm going to uh, take the range of future cash flows and add the cash flow which is at the present outside the NPV function and do you think we get a negative NPV or a positive NPV? Let's see. It's negative. So what does that tell us? It tells us that our return is giving us less than 8%. Um, what about 7%? Is it giving us less than 7%? Uh-huh. It is giving us less than 7% also. So uh, we can keep doing this, right? We can keep iterating, uh, but let's just use the IRR function and find out exactly how much it is giving us. So we use the IRR function, okay? Now I say equal to IRR, I open brackets, it says values. Now in the IRR function, I use starting from the first cash flow up to the last cash flow. I don't need to add the present cash flow outside of the IRR function. That's the way uh, Excel works, okay? Uh, now, if you will see, the other thing it asks for is a guess. The guess is your guess as to where um, the IRR actually falls. But you don't need to enter that. It's an optional field. So you just give the range of values. Uh, it'll take a default for the guess at 10%. And uh, there we go. What does it tell us? Uh huh. 6.23% is the actual return of this series of cash flows. Now, if I put 6.23% as my benchmark rate or my discount rate, what is the NPV I should get? I should get zero. And do I? Let's see. So 6.23. Well, it's very close to zero. So it's, um, let's uh, play around with a few more decimal places, 6.231, uh, no, too high, 6.2305, uh, also high, right, 6.2301. So, well, this seems to be the correct rate, 6.2301, I get an NPV of zero. So you see that just by using the NPV function alone, you can also find out the IRR. That means just playing around with the discount rate till you achieve an NPV of zero will give you the uh, IRR. And this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the IRR, right, where the NPV is zero. So as I said, just by playing around with the NPV function as well, you can find out the IRR. Or you can use the IRR function in Excel to find out the IRR. Okay, now um, given the series or cash flows or an investment therefore, which tool do we use, NPV or IRR, to figure out whether um, we should take that investment or not? Well, it seems that IRR is an obvious answer because it gives us the actual return of that investment. Uh, but what is most apparent is not always correct. Let me just show you some uh, peculiarities with the IRR uh, function or the IRR tool. Now, I've got a series of cash flows, okay? And uh, I'm using, uh, well, let's, let me just calculate it for you. Yeah, so I use the NPV tool and I've got uh, my uh, rate, let's say I take 7% and I take my future cash flows and I have the present cash flow to the function. Uh, so at 7%, I'm getting a negative NPV. What does that tell me? It seems to tell me that the actual return of the investment is below 7%. Let's try uh, the IRR function. Now what does uh, IRR tell us? It says no, it's not below 7%. It's uh, the IRR is actually 10%. Let me show you something even more peculiar. Uh, at uh, so the NPV function says at seven percent it's negative. So obviously, if I change it to six percent, uh, maybe I come somewhere close. Uh, hey, no, it becomes even more negative. Uh, so what if I put ten uh, percent? It's zero. Now that's weird. Uh, 
so it's telling me at 7% uh, uh, that the return lies below 7%, but at 10% uh, is, is actually the return. So that's weird. Now, hey, I just just changing this uh, to let's say 20%. Still zero. That's weird, isn't it? But that is an anomaly which is there in the IRR function. That uh, without getting too much into detail um, on how this happens, essentially when there are uh, projects which have multiple changes in sign and so on, what you find when you do the derivation is two IRRs uh, lying, both of them are lying on either side of the true IRR. So in this case, we're getting two IRRs, one at 10, one at 20%. Um, so that's an anomaly. So uh, it is always better to use NPV as a decision-making tool, which means you use NPV uh, to say whether you want to invest, make an investment or not. Um, as you, it's always better to use NPV as a decision-making tool, okay? Because IRR can sometimes... Uh, lead you into uh, making an error. Thank you.